got an i7 3770K and I'm going to try and test it in my Maximus 5 Extreme. Let's see how it goes. So there we go, we've got the Maximus 5 Extreme fired up with the 3770K in. Like I said, I haven't had one of these since 2014 so it's been quite a while but I've had plenty of 2500Ks, 2600Ks and X79 chips. Uh, I haven't actually used this board very much either. I uh, used to use a UD5H a lot, gigabyte board. Let's get into it I guess. It's got water cooling on it so I've got a decent chance of uh, getting some decent settings on it I guess. The auto overclock looks like it goes up to 4.6 and uh, we'll go with a manual. Obviously we're going to keep the base clock um, as it is and um, we'll probably start at 44 and uh, not sure about the other settings we'll set the memory off at 2133 that's for super pi don't know what that does that was in the uh, other BIOSes back in the day as well uh, we'll go with 8128 to start with That'll do for now, I think. Oh, so the commander 8 to 1 to, yeah, I did, that's fine. Right, CPU power management. Ah, yeah, this is what I wanted to change. Go full power. Don't want to be holding back when I'm water cooling. Wonder what this goes up to on here. Invalid thousand now, eight hundred. Must go up to five hundred surely. Yeah, five hundred is the max, so we'll leave it on that for now. See what we've got for voltages. CPU manual voltage, we'll start at 1.35 and see how that goes. I'm at 1.7 for now, although it probably doesn't need it. And we'll leave everything else on auto. There's quite a lot <laughs> of uh, stuff there. So go on CPU configuration and we will ditch the power saving features. Oh, there they are. <laughs> Speed step disabled. Disabled. Disable. 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 There we go. I think I've not set the CPU ratio. I have 44. Right, so 4.4 gigahertz, 1.35 volts. It doesn't boot up at this. Uh, frankly it can uh, go in the bin. So it's just finished its first run there at the uh, pleb 4.4 gigahertz so it's not going in the bin and uh, that was about 1.32 volts under load. You can see the temperatures there nice and chilly 57 on the hottest core. Uh, I don't think this chip's been de-lidded and it has got paste under it rather than solder because it's ivy bridge uh, it seems to get 807, so let's uh, overclock it properly and see what it can do. Should be able to shove uh, probably 1.45 volts in it before it starts to overheat, hopefully. So I'm hoping, don't want to jinx myself, but I'm hoping to get 5 gigahertz out of it. So we're up to 4.8 gigahertz and it's scored 881. Uh, now if you can see in the bottom left hand corner there, there's a nice spicy 2600k score of 927 and we're at 880 so that must have been over 5 gigahertz although I can't quite remember so you can see oh there's a, another 3770k down there 
that must have been my highest score before at 902 so hopefully we can beat that one but this one we've only got to 881 these scores by the way are from like 2014 I uh, managed to get this Cinebench off a old drive and I've been using it to run and test the phenoms on and it has loads of files I think it, these 4770k scores were mine as well when I was only running 4.7 on that so yeah there it is still the same voltage now realistically to get over 5 gigahertz I think it's going to have to do at least 4.9 at this voltage so I'm, fingers crossed it works at 4.9 900 points passed at 4.9 which is quite impressive you can see it's still it's gone up a little bit 61 because obviously we've upped the speed quite a bit uh, so it'll be pulling some more amperage but yeah 900 easy peasy so we'll go for 5G next uh, temperatures still spectacular as well right we're at 5 gigahertz so I think it's gonna crash haven't run yet obviously blue screen yeah it's frozen oh the only Cinebench is frozen the actual uh, system hasn't yet that is quite impressive can't close it now CPU-Z still works, so that's nice. Right, I've got 11.5 open. Didn't, It's not blue screened yet, so I'm hoping if it is going to blue screen it will do a courteous job and blue screen on me here. No, it didn't. So it is, it's right on the edge. Come on, blue screen on me. Now, application error. How rude. I want a blue screen. Typical. Right, I'm going to go up to 1.375 volts in the BIOS, just a tiny little bit more. So, this is very, very interesting. Uh, it's at 5 gigahertz on 1.43 volts with only high LLC, which means it has a lot of droop, but I've got it to run. Uh, 15 and I've done that by dropping the PLL voltage which I'll show you in the BIOS in a second but I need to save this score because it's the highest one I've got so far so what I did was I went up to 1.45 volts or 1.475 volts I think with the LLC on ultra high and it was basically just blue screening and blue screening and getting application errors so I can't remember whether it was this or Sandy Bridge that you had to lower the PLL volts to get a few extra megahertz so I put it at 49 on the multiplier and 101 ish on the base clock to get uh, 49.50 and I lowered the PLL to 1.7 volts and that passed so I've just tried 5 gigahertz and it's actually worked so that's interesting so these are the settings here I'm using in the BIOS so you can see we've got 5 gigahertz set the memory you can see it's a bit like unresponsive and weird but it does work so the memory is just at 711, 724 or whatever I haven't really set anything else but you can see 1.435 only high on the low line calibration and there's the PLL add it's set to 1.66 so I'm going to drop it to 1.6625 but it does get a bit stuttery um, or laggy when you drop the PLL and it gets worse the lower you go so I guess eventually it will get so slow that the CPU doesn't work anymore Let's see if it will boot I've dropped it a little bit again Oh no, instant blue screen, so that might be too low. Let's just try one more time. 
Nah. It's too low. So that's kind of annoying. I was only able to run Cinebench once. I did try again. And uh, it didn't work the second time. It crashed. Well, they got the application error. It didn't actually crash. So it looks like 1.67, 1.66 is the kind of area where it actually works. It's very, very picky. Even 1.68 didn't work. So I'm going to do, if it makes it into Windows, is I'm going to run it in real time straight away. See if it boots. Yeah, you can see it like lagging a bit and the wheel stops a couple of times as well so that's that's the difference that tiny little bit of voltage makes it's the difference between it getting into windows and it not so I've just got it to run once again but in real time that time and you can see I got 923 rather than 920 which I got last time which is oh, I mustn't have saved it because it crashed on the second run but there you go 5 gigahertz 1.4 3 volts. I might try lower the voltage and see if it still works. But it's getting 9.23. There we go. Probably not that impressive. That's 5.1 gigahertz booted at 1.45 volts. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to be able to run anything whatsoever, but I'm going to try and run single thread and see what happens. Oh. <laughs> That's what happens. So I've just run the uh, R11.5 at 5 gigahertz. You can see I got 10.27, which is exactly the same as my top 2600K score that I got there. And uh, before it looks like I got 9.97. So that's a decent increase. Uh, it ran pretty well. I actually just ran it twice straight off on, in real time, and uh, it worked fine. So yeah, it seems 11.5 is a bit easier. I might try and do a bit of uh, BCLK and see if that works, but won't get my hopes up too much yet.